University. Good to see each and every one of you this morning. Uh, you know, some of us went through a rather rough night. And uh, with that said, we'd like to know if there are any members that may need some assistance because we know there are some without power still. So is there anyone that is having a power problem that we can do anything for? Okay. Uh, we'd like to welcome any and all visitors that we have, and we will recognize you later in the service, but we want you to know that you are our honored guest. We could have chosen to be somewhere else, but you're here in our midst and in the midst of God. Our announcements this morning, we ask you to continue to pray for Sister Marva Wright and the family during their time of bereavement. Sister Mildred Brown is still at Marymount waiting to be transferred to Broadway Multicare Center. So continue to pray for her. Sister Jill King will be moving to Alexandria uh, Virginia, April 1st, and uh, call her and touch base with her before she leaves. Her number will be posted. Our men's training class will be Saturday, April 1st at 1030. So let's not forget that. Continue prayers for Kathleen Convoy. Uh, continue prayers for the health of Brother McDuffie and family, Sister Cherie Warner, Sister Doris Smith, Sister Sherry Marshall, Sister Sharon Foster. Traveling Grace has asked for uh, Mary Jackson and uh, also Jackson and Ray Knight and for any others that are going out of town. Prayers for Sister Denise Draper who is not feeling well Marilyn Stewart, who is in Akron, caring for Flo and her husband, Ralph. Sister Esther and Brother Ricky Barnes. Uh, Brother Louis Lupo, uh, Luco and uh, Andrea, who are scheduled for surgery. Uh, Almstead Williams and the brother-in-law of Sister Wade. Continued prayers for Brother and Sister Cottingham. Glad to see they're here with us this morning. Uh, Sister Patricia, Patricia Gaines and family. Sister Lachelle Wallace and family. Sister Joe King, Pamela Ely, Constance Williams, Ruth Wade, Kathy Pope, Nicole Bird, Brother Donald Nelson, Melvin Flowers, Wayne Brown, Willie Blackwell Sr., Demario Brown, Trent Jackson, who is in hospice, and Marcus Atkinson. On our roster this morning, we have Brother Doug McHenry, who's going to lead us in song. Yes, sir. Brother Carlton Pope will uh, bring us our meditation and scripture. Uh, Brother uh, Ricky Barnes uh, II will take us to the throne of God in prayer. Brother McLean will bring us our sermon. Brother Greg Shields will uh, take us to communion. I'll be back with um, offering and announcements. Uh, response facilitator will be Brother Donald Nelson and our benediction, Brother Justin Shields. I'd like to share with you from Mark, first chapter. As it was written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the, thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way the Lord make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for remission of sins. And there went out 
unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem that were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. And John was clothed in camel's hair and with a girdle of a skin about his loins. And he did eat locusts and wild honey. He preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love, for your grace. We thank you, Father, that you have brought us through another day, another week, and a rough night. We ask, Heavenly Father, that we will continue to be your people, that we will love you, honor you, think of you always, follow in your footsteps. Father, we ask that we will ever be mindful of the sacrifice that Christ has made for each and every one of us. And we ask that when our work is done, you will have a resting place at your footstool for each and every one of us. In Christ's precious name we pray. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'd like to announce to you at this time to avoid singing a solo that we're having some technical difficulties. But there are books in the thing in front of you. We're going to get together on that. Our first song is, I Know my, that, that My Redeemer Lives. I, if I remember correctly, it's on 218 in this book. I Know That My Redeemer Lives. If I remember correctly. Is that it? 218. 217. No, no 218. That was right. I got good memory. <laughs> okay. And our next song is How I Love the Great Redeemer. That's in that book too. So put your finger there and then we'll be off and running, singing praises to our Lord. That's on page 519. Okay. Everybody there say amen. Amen. All right. I know that my Redeemer lives and ever prays for me. I know eternal life he gives from sin and sorrow free. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know eternal life he gives. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. He will that I should wholly be in word and thought in deed. Then I I know, I know that my redeemer 
song of gladness in his name, here and in the world above, my soul shall sing your saving love, life and life, and joy is he, a precious friend who died for Glory be to him forever in his praises to Christ the Lamb. He has filled my life with sunshine. He has made me what I am. Not everyone would know him. Oh, that all would adore. Oh, that Trust the love of the mighty friend above and be his forevermore. He is everything to me, to me. He is everything to me and everything shall always be. I will never will cease to raise a song of gladness in his praise. You are here and in the world above, my soul shall sing your saving love, life and life, enjoy and see a precious friend. For me. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, I greet each and every one of you. Please join me in today's meditation. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. But as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manners of conversation. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work, pass the time of your soul journey here in fear. Silver and gold from the vain conversation receive the position of your Father. Today's scripture will be taken from Ecclesiastes. Five, verse 1 and 2. Ecclesiastes 5, verse 1 and 2. Please join me in verse 1. Guard your steps as you go to the house of God and draw near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifices of fools, for they do not know they are doing evil. Do not be hasty in word or impulsive in thought to bring upon a matter in the presence of God. For God is in heaven and you are on earth. Therefore, let your words be few.
There's a wonderful place we call home. Tis a city of glory divine. It is built in the garden of prayer. And that beautiful home shall be mine. Oh, that wonderful Eden so blessed. Where Jesus the master has gone. To prepare us a glorious home. There he bids us a welcome. To come, oh, oh wonderful city of God, by faith in the distance I sing, where the angels' sweet echo of song, in music, oh, cadence is chant. Oh, wonderful city of God, by faith in the distance. I see there's a mansion prepared over there. Yes, a place in that city for me. Oh, how sweet it will be there to dwell with the Savior and Master of all in a palace of diamond and gold where no evil to us can befall. There no sorrow that home shall invade, for our loved ones no more there shall die. But when Siletro unbroken sweet day, while eternity ages roll by, oh, wonderful city of God, just across in that beautiful cloud, where the angels we echo of song in musical cadences shine. Oh, wonderful city of God, by faith in the distance I see. There's a mansion prepared over there. Yes, a place in that city for me. When the jewels of Jesus are brought there to shine in that land of sweet song. What a beautiful, beautiful thought that I should be there in that throng. Sweetest peace to my soul it will be to behold such a glorious sight where the sun and the moon neither shine where the glory of God is the light oh wonderful city of God uh, just across in that beautiful cloud where the angels sweet echo of song in musical cadences shine. Oh, wonderful city of God, by faith in the distance I see. Every airport. <clears throat> Yes, a place in that city for me. Oh, wonderful city. family? Good how y'all feeling this morning? Amen. Oh, Lord, how y'all feeling this morning? Amen. There we go. Aren't you happy to praise God together in yeah. the assembly? Yeah. Amen. Well, let's go to God in prayer together. Amen. 
Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the sunshine. We thank you for your protection as the storms were brewing really hard yesterday and the day before. Thank you for bringing us all here safely, Lord. We're praying that we keep you in our hearts and our minds focused on you and only you, not allowing Satan or anything else to distract us from the worship that you so rightfully deserve, Lord. Um, we're praying for Brother McLean that he remember everything he studied, that he delivered the word the way you want him to deliver it. Please help our minds and our hearts to be open to receive it and to not only just hear it, but to live it in our lives and move on. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our invitation song will I mean you know in advance is for the sake of Brother McLean also, also is spare them one more day. Brother Martin's favorite song. <clears throat> that's it, that's in the uh, well, the songs of praise. Okay. Excuse me. <clears throat> There's much to do. Amen. be guilty of saying we don't have nothing to do. There is much to do. There is much to do. There's work on every hand. Hearts to cry for help comes ringing through the land. Jesus called for reaper. I must act to be. Work without a master. Here am I, send me. Well, I'm here. Here am I. Oh, Lord, send me. Well, now here, here am I, I'm ready at the bidding, Lord send me, there's a plaintive cry of morning so distressed, and beside a heart who seek but find no rest, these should have my love and tender sympathy, and yet thy pity, here am I, send me, well now here, here am I. While the feast is free, I must be more faithful. Here am I, send me. Well, now here am I, send me. Here am I. me go and tell them, brother, turn and flee, master, I will save them, here am I, send me, well, now here, here am I. Well, I'm here. 
grateful to God Almighty for blessing all of us with the opportunity to come together and to worship God in spirit and in truth. Uh, we had, of course, some technical issues, but I stood there long enough until they got straightened out. We thank all of our brethren for leading us in various aspects of, of worship. Uh, Brother Amos Hicks for ushering us into the presence of God Almighty. Uh, Brother Douglas McHenry for leading us in praises to God Almighty. Uh, thank you for being flexible enough to take an audible and keep on going. Appreciate you so very, very much. We thank Brother Carlton for uh, the reading of the meditation and the scripture. And then, of course, Brother Ricky Bar Richard Barnes II. I'm going to say it right for leading us to the throne of grace in, in prayer. Uh, I'm going to do something a little differently this morning, uh, but I am going to continue our study of, of worship and what does it mean to have true and authentic worship. But I do want to say to those of you who are visiting with us, thank you for being here with us today. Uh, you could have been somewhere else, but you have come to join us as we worship God in spirit and in truth. If you have questions about anything that you see or hear, please don't hesitate to ask us. We are a people who love the Lord and we endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. We believe that there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who's above all, through all, and in us all. And if you have any questions about anything that you see or that you hear, please don't hesitate to ask us. And for those who are watching live on Facebook or later on Facebook or on YouTube, thank you for joining us as well. Now, before we get into our message, there is one other congregational song I want to try to sing. I hope this computer will uh, cooperate with me. Uh, somebody said, well... Uh, it just, there's just so, so much that we want to try to accomplish today. This song is really a prelude to the message that I am going to share with you today. So we want to sing a song that's entitled, We Will Glorify. Uh, the song will be up on the screen for you, and I'd just like you to join me as we sing this song, then we'll read the text, pray, and go into our message. We will glorify the King of Kings. If we all have it, let us together sing. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the great I Am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty, we will bow before His throne, we will worship Him in righteousness. We will worship him alone. He is Lord of heaven, Lord of earth. He is Lord of all who live. He is Lord of the universe. Oh, praise to him we Hallelujah to the Lamb, 
Sounds like you all believe that. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the great I, I am. Now I want to start our sermon. And I actually am going to do it a little differently than I have been doing it. So you can see what is going on. Somebody said, uh-oh. <laughs> Our sermon on this morning is going to continue under the thing true and authentic worship. And the title is, Does God Care? How we worship him. Does God care how we worship him? It comes from Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, and a few other passages of scripture that Brother Carlton read into your hearing. And I want to read it again from the New American Standard Bible. As you can see, I'm technologically challenged this morning. But bear with me, and you'll see why I'm going in this direction. In Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verse 1, and two. From the New American Standard Bible, this is what it says. Guard your steps as you go to the house of God and draw near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools for they do not know they are doing evil. Do not be hasty in word or impulsive in thought to bring up a matter in the presence of God. For God is in heaven and you are on the earth. Therefore, let your words be few. Does God care how we worship? Pray with me. Gracious and all wise Father, we thank you for the opportunity you've given us on this day to worship you in spirit and in truth and Thank you for all of the brethren who have led us in various aspects of worship and those in the congregation who have joined in that worship. Thank you for the brethren who will lead us in other aspects of worship, even following this message. And thank you for giving me an opportunity to share with your people, either by way of procreation or recreation, the subject at hand. Father, my prayer is that you will get the glory, that Jesus will be lifted up, that saints of God will be edified, and that those who are not yet Christians might be pricked in their heart and respond in humble obedience to the gospel of Christ before it's everlasting and eternally too late. Father, my prayer is that at the end of this message, all of us will come to a fuller and a better understanding of the truth that it does matter that you do care how we worship you. Thank you for the gift of Jesus, your son. In his blessed name we pray and ask it all. Amen. In his book, Does God Care How We Worship? 
Ligandungan writes these words. Worship that glorifies God is predicated upon the pattern, prescriptions, and practices set forth in the word of God. I want to repeat that first part of it. Worship that glorifies God is predicated upon the pattern, prescriptions, and practices set forth in the word of God. Unless we worship the biblical God who reveals himself to us along with his self-revelation concerning how he is to be worshipped, then we are embracing idolatry. Duncan offer some notably brief but memorable pithy expressions concerning worship that should get our attention. Number one, idolatry, not atheism, is the problem with contemporary worship. Number two, it is worship according to scripture that gives us our doctrine of the church, including its structure, forms, and content. There is a God with a little g that we want and the God with a capital G who is and the two are not the same. Number four, adding to the word of God is akin to taking away from it. Does God care how we worship him? How we answer this question ultimately depends upon our view of God. That's why I began this series a couple of weeks ago on true and authentic or biblical worship describing an in-depth study of the nature, the characteristics, and the identity of God or Yahweh or Jehovah. Many believe God will be pleased with anything we offer to him in worship just as long as it's sincere and from the heart. But the question on the floor is, is this what the Bible teaches? Throughout our lifetimes, we each develop notions and ideas of who God is and what he requires of us. And I would suggest that in many cases, those notions have nothing to do with the God we read about in the Bible. In Genesis 1.27, we are told, God created man in his own image. I would challenge each of us to evaluate our view of God and make sure we haven't turned this passage around and created God in our own image and serve a God of our own making and likeness. Does God care how we worship him? 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 and 17 says, all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. So when we ask the question, does God care how we worship him? This scripture tells us that we have a means of determining the answer to this question. If we are honest and we look at the world that you and I live in, if we are honest and we look at religion around us, and if we are honest and we look even in some of our congregations today, how we are worshiping God is not according to the word of God. Does God care how we worship him? The Bible strongly cautions us about making assumptions regarding worship offered to God. I read in your hearing Ecclesiastes 5 verse 1, God your steps as you go to the house of God and draw near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools. I didn't write this. 
The Holy Spirit wrote this. Our worship of God can be foolish. For they do not know they are doing evil. Not only is it foolish, it's evil when it is foolish. There is an attitude toward worship that is foolish and to indiscriminately offer a sacrifice or worship to God without first listening to and determining what God has to say may result in unknowingly doing evil. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 through 17 says, Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time, because the days are evil. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. If we approach God without first understanding what his will is, we are being foolish. We need to be wise and listen to what he has to tell us before we simply assume Soon, what we're offering to him in worship is what he desires. I brought my amens with me today. I'm not expecting a lot from you. A text that we went over a couple of weeks ago from Romans 15 verse 4, I want to remind you of again. For whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction that through perseverance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 11 says, Now, these things happened to them as an example, and they were written for our instruction upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Some of us have been to school, but we haven't learned. We have flunked worship 101. That which was written in earlier times. Clearly speaking of God's dealings with man throughout the Old Testament was written for our learning and instruction. And in other words, by reading about God's interaction with man in the Old Testament, we can be instructed how to be more perfectly serving God today. You all with me? Let me give you three biblical principles regarding worship. Does God care how we worship him? The first one is this. What we offer in worship must be by faith. What we, wor what we offer in worship must be by faith. Now Genesis chapter 4 verse 3 through 5. We are all aware of Cain and Abel. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 3 through 5, the Bible says, So it came about in the course of time that Cain brought an offering to the Lord of the fruit of the ground. Now, the first thing you need to pay attention to is that he brought it to the Lord. And Abel, on his part, also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and for his offering, but for Cain and for his offering, he had no regard. Listen, I wanted to sink in. Just because you show up in a church building somewhere. And even if it has outside the church building, Church of Christ, on it, doesn't mean that you have worshipped God the way God said worship him. The Lord had regard for Abel and for his offering, but for Cain and for his offering, he had no regard. So Cain became very angry and his countenance fell. God, how dare you accept Abel's worship and don't accept mine? We're not told here specifically why God rejected Cain's sacrifice, but one thing we can clearly determine from this passage is that God does not indiscriminately accept all worship. I wish people would stop saying that. Yes. 
What we offer in worship must be by faith. Now, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 4 tells us why God accepted Abel's sacrifice but did not accept uh, Cain's. By faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained the testimony that he was righteous. God testifying about his gifts, and through faith, though he is dead, he still speaks. So since scripture is interpreting scripture, the Hebrew writer says Abel's sacrifice was by faith and was therefore considered righteous. And the clear implication is that Cain's sacrifice was not offered by faith. What we offer in worship must be by faith. And so Romans 10 verse 17 says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Of God. Now Romans 10, 17 teaches us that faith comes by hearing the word of God. It seems reasonable to infer that God gave both Cain and Abel some kind of verbal instruction regarding what he wanted them to offer him. I do not serve a God who is unjust, who will punish Cain for doing something unless he had told Cain what to do. Apparently, Abel, by faith, followed that instruction while Cain did not. And for that reason, Cain's sacrifice was not acceptable to God. What we offer in worship must be by faith. And Hebrews 11, 6 says, And without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. You and I cannot please God if we do not come to God by faith, and the way we come to God by faith is according to how the word of God teaches us, he asks us to come into his presence. The only way we can truly come to God and worship him by faith is if we do it according to what his word reveals. What we offer in worship must be by faith. Here's another example. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1, 2, and 3. Now Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took their respective fire pans and after putting fire in them, placed incense on it and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. And fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed them and they died before the Lord. Listen, assuming that something is acceptable to God simply because he hasn't specifically said not to do it cannot be by faith. How often do people say, well, since God didn't say I can't do this or I shouldn't do this, then I ought to be able to do it. No, I it says they offered strange fire. So evidently God told them where to get the fire from. Hello. And once God told them where to get the fire from, he didn't have to tell them where not to get it from. God had a specific source for getting fire to burn incense on his altar. Y'all looking at me strange. It's ludicrous to suggest that God would have to list everything he does not want us to do in worship for it to be specifically forbidden. It should be sufficient enough for God to tell us what to do. You all are intelligent people. No reasonable person would suggest we substitute pizza and Pepsi for the unleavened bread and fruit of the vine of the Lord's Supper. Hello. 
And I love pizza and Pepsi. Super Supreme plus pineapple. But I better not bring it in here for worship. See, that was as bad as some of my brethren in equipment on one occasion. We ran out of unleavened bread, and they said, Brother McClain, we don't have any unleavened bread. We got to go get something so we can have communion. And something just told me to look at the tray that they were taking out once they'd gone to Swifty Swanee, Brother Frank. And they came by, and I said, wait a minute, let me see what you got there. And they had gone and bought some hot dog buns and tore them up and put them in the tray. I said, brethren, that won't do. And I got on the phone and called the white brethren that were only three blocks away from me. That, this, that, this is another story altogether. They're only three blocks away from us, Brother Frank, but we can't worship together because y'all white and we black and the people ain't going to like it. That's another sermon altogether. Because you see, Brother Amos, I could, I could play on their flag football team. I can play on their softball team because I was black and athletic, but I couldn't worship with them. And this was 1950, folk. It was 1979. I can go teach in their school at Georgia Christian School, but I couldn't worship with them. That's another story altogether. Still about worship. Y'all should see the way you're looking at me. But I want to show you something else. Because after they offered strange fire, God sent down fire from heaven. God's amazing. The very thing you disobeyed me in, I'm going to use to punish you with. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Does, does that mean that I can just keep worshiping God all these different kind of ways and then be condemned for doing it? Yep. Watch what Moses says, says to them. Because Aaron was upset. These are his sons. Then Moses said to Aaron, it is what the Lord spoke, saying, by those who come near me, I will be treated as holy. And before all the people, I will be honored. So Aaron, therefore, kept silent. When we're presumptuous and offering worship to God, we are not honoring him or are we treating him as holy? Does God care how we worship him? What we offer him in worship must be by faith. You all remember the story in 1 Samuel chapter 15? Samuel had told King Saul, you need to go. God says, go and kill the Amalekites. Don't leave one of them alive. And then when they came back and Samuel was a little late getting there for service, Saul offered a sacrifice that he wasn't qualified to offer because he wasn't a priest. Hello. And then when King Saul saw Samuel, he said, hey, preacher, glad to see you. I've done what the Lord commanded me to do. And then Samuel said, well, if you've done what the Lord commanded you to do, why do I hear the bleeding of the sheep and the lowing of the oxen? And then just like people today, he then took the responsibility off of himself and put it on the people. And he says, but the people took some of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the choices of the things devoted to destruction, to sacrifice to the Lord your God at Gilgal. Saul didn't even say my God, but your God. 
And Samuel said, Has the Lord as much diligent uh, delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of divination, and insubordination is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. Ah. Obeying the Lord in our worship is far more important than our sincere intent. We have to offer in worship, it must be by faith, but secondly, it must be of quality. In the book of Malachi, we find God rebuking the priests of his day. They were his priests. These were his people. It was his worship. Watch what he says. A son honors his father and a servant his master. Then if I am a father, where is my honor? And if I am a master, where's my respect, says the Lord of hosts to you. O priest who despise my name, but you say, how have we despised thy name? You are presenting defiled food upon my altar. But you say, how have we defiled thee? In that you say, the table of the Lord is to be despised. But when you present the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And when you present the lame and sick, is it not evil? Why not offer it to your governor? Would he be pleased with you or would he receive you kindly, says the Lord of hosts. Hey, don't forget Romans 15, 4. Things that were written aforetime were written for our learning. What we find here is these individuals seem to be doing the right thing. They're no longer involved in idolatry. They're worshiping Jehovah God in the right place. They're offering sacrifices as they were commanded to do, but they're simply going through the motions. It seems to me that what they're trying to do is get by with offering God the bare minimum. I need to look into my heart and ask some serious questions when I'm worshiping God. What am I offering to God? Am I giving him my best or am I simply giving him my leftovers, the things that don't really matter to me? Does he get the bare minimum of my time and energy? Is my service to him confined to what takes place within the walls of a church building? Or do I even have trouble with that? Do I daily devote myself to serving him? Is my contribution simply what I have left after I spent the rest on myself? Is his word of little significance in my life or does it sustain me and direct me daily? Do I love the Lord God with all my heart and with all my mind and with all my strength and with all my soul? Luke 10 verse 27. Or am I simply going through the motions? I said, I'm asking myself these questions. You need to ask yourself these questions. Does God care how we worship him? What we offer in worship must be of quality. Malachi 1 verse 10 goes on and said, Oh, that there were one among you who would shut the gates, that you might not uselessly kindle fire on my altar. I am not pleased with you, says the Lord of hosts, nor will I accept an offering from you. See, too many of us don't care whether we're pleasing to God. Too many of us are just going through the motions. Yeah, 
God says, you uselessly kindle fire on my altar. It does not matter. I don't accept it. And before we keep talking about denominational folk and how they worship wrong, the Bible says judgment is going to begin in the house of God. And if the righteous just barely get saved, what we offer to God in worship must be by faith, it must be according to his word, and it must be the best that we have to offer him. Perhaps I recognize times in my life where God is not getting the best I have to offer. And so the question then is, that I need to ask is, am I satisfied with that? It should be my desire and it should be every Christian's desire to improve myself every day. And then the third thing. The third principle is this. What we offer in worship must be sincere. Did you all hear me? In John chapter 4, verse 20 through 24, and we studied this a couple of weeks ago, but I just want to bring it to your memory again. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and you people say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, an hour is coming when neither in this mountain nor, nor in Jerusalem shall you worship the Father. You worship that which you do not know. We worship that which we know, for salvation is from the Jews, but an hour is coming, and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such people the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Folk, it's not optional. What does it mean to worship God in spirit and in truth? Some of the things we've been discussing already this morning fall under this heading. Worshiping God by faith is worshiping him according to his word, according to truth. Offering God our best is certainly part of worshiping him in spirit. But it also means our worship must be sincere. Just... Way too many times you hear people say, it doesn't matter to God what I offer to him as long as it's sincere and from the heart. I believe we've clearly established that it does matter to God what we offer him. And that that is the unequivocal from a biblical perspective. It is possible to offer God specifically what he requires and to offer him something of the right quality, but it's not done in sincerity. I know I wouldn't get a lot of amens on that. And if we do that, we are no better off than the person who doesn't even question whether what they're offering to God is what he asked for. And we're no better than the person who simply offers his leftovers. What does that word sincere mean? My understanding is that the Latin word for sincere actually is made of two root words. Sin, S-I-N, which means without. And sere, C-E-R-E, which means wax. Scholars say that the word derived from the practice of repairing or hiding cracks and blemishes in pottery by filling them with wax. And so you would go into the marketplace and if someone tried to sell you a piece of pottery, you would take it and sit it out in the sun and see if any part of it would melt. And if it did not melt, you would say that it was sincere or it was without wax. Our 
worship must be without wax. It must be without blemishes and without flaw. Our worship must be in spirit and in truth. Our worship must be worship that has no hidden agendas and no motives behind what we're offering God to get something out of it for ourselves. It must be in spirit and in truth. In Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24, the psalmist says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. When was the last time you asked God to search you? When was the last God you asked God to try and know your thoughts? When was the last time you asked God, God, look, if there's anything wicked in me, I'm not worried about brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so. If you find something in me, take it away. Some of you need to ask these questions. Why am I a member of the church where I attend? Is it simply because that's where my family has always attended? And it would create too many waves or cause too much drama for me to change now? Is it because they have a wonderful music program? Is it simply because I like the preacher or pastor, however you want to call them? Is it because that's where everyone is going these days? You need to remember the words of Matthew 7, 13 when Jesus said, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there are who go in by it. Is it because they have more college students or more attractive members of the opposite sex than anywhere else? People have all kinds of different reasons for doing what they do. And what I need to do, and what I would encourage each of us to do, is make sure that what I'm offering to God for worship is according to spirit and in truth. In the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, verse number 8, Jesus said these words, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I believe this passage goes hand in hand with what we're talking about today. Listen, it's not talking about those who are free from sin or none of us would be seeing God. I believe what Jesus is saying is that it is only when your heart is pure, sincere, pure in motive, and free from an agenda, it is only then that you can see God for who he is and then understand what he requires. We must get all those other impurities out of the way before we can do that. Those who worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. From a biblical point of view, I don't see how we can come to any other conclusion. Does God care how we worship him? Yes, he does. It is of extreme importance to him. And for that reason, it should be of extreme importance to each of us. Remember the text I read in the beginning of the sermon. That 
your worship could be foolish. See, some of y'all sitting up here sleep now. And all of it ain't because of medicine. Some of it is because last night, rather than preparing to come to worship, you decided to do something else that was more important to you. And did not care whether or not it interfered with getting the Bible study or worship. Some of you are sitting right there right now thinking, well, we didn't have instrumental music, so our singing was right, but did you sing? Some of you all stopped listening to me 40 minutes ago because you didn't want to hear what I had to say. And if I hit anything that came down your street, you got even madder. There are just too many people in our world who are calling things worship that is not worship. And there are too many people in the Lord's church who are defining worship by what pleases them rather than what pleases God. Does God care? How we worship him? Yes, he does. And if you're not a child of God, you can never worship God in spirit and in truth. Yeah. You got to be in Christ in order to worship God in spirit and in truth. God has instructed his people to worship him. And even if you start doing what we do, but you are never in Christ, and you die in your sins, Jesus said, where he is, you cannot come. Jesus died in order that we could actually come back into relationship with God and worship him in spirit and in truth. And I got some more news for you. Everybody talking about going to heaven. Ain't going there. I even got some more news for you. Some of you wouldn't enjoy it if you got there. Because you can't stand to do it here. Do you love him with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength? If you are a sinner, if you're outside of Christ, Christ died that you might live. You must hear how he lived, died, and was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You must believe that he died for your sins, paid your debt that he did not owe for your crime and my crime that he did not commit. You must believe he went back to heaven. He's on the right hand of God. And one day he's coming back here. He's coming back for a church that looks like him and that has indeed been worshiping God, the Father and the Son, 
in spirit and in truth. Are you willing to repent of your sins? Change your mind, change your will, change, change your actions. Remember I read in the text in Ecclesiastes 5 that when you worship God foolishly, foolishly you unknowingly do evil. Forget it. You can sit in this building all you want to and have an evil heart. We have to repent. We have to confess with the mouth Jesus Christ is God's son. And then, yes, you must be baptized, buried in water for the remission of sins. And then when you arise to walk in the newness of life, Acts 2, I think it's verse 42, said they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. It's talking about they continued in worship. We can really sing, spare them one more day, and the song's up there as well, Brother McHenry. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow's not promised. Today is all you have. I beg you. I plead with you. Stop playing games with God. He's holy. He's righteous. He's just. But praise God, he's merciful and gracious. But he is worthy to be worshipped. Do you need to come? Will you come right now as we together stand and sing? Many so hear it not thy word, they have turned not to thy way. If it be thy will, please have patience with them still. Spare them, Lord, just one more day.
And when in come, with work yet to be done, spare them, Lord, just one more day. Spare them, Lord, just one more day. Spare Pray with me. Almighty Father, the God, the creator, the sustainer of this universe in which we live, mm -hmm. the God in whom we move, we live, and we have our very being. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, for the opportunity to proclaim your truth. Mm -hmm. Father, my prayer is that my motive was right and pure and that you have been pleased with the message, the content of it, and the method of its delivery, as well as the motive. Father, I pray that you've gotten the glory, and that your children have been built up in the most holy and precious faith. And that if there's some precious soul who is not in relationship with you, who has not obeyed from the heart the doctrine of Jesus Christ, the gospel that's your power and the salvation. Please, touch them. Cause your word to bring forth fruit in their lives. And help them to respond yes to you, no to Satan. Thank you for letting me preach your word. Bless what was right and appropriate. Forgive me where I may have fallen short. Try me. Search me. Lead me. As I continue to preach your word. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. For all of you who are Christians, remember to do something that only a Christian would do, whether you're a Christian or not. Remember, God loves you. Jesus died for you. I love you. And I am your servant for Jesus' sake. Church, say amen. amen. Please say amen again. We want to thank Brother McLean for that timely lesson. God does desire our, our spirit-filled worship service. We want to thank him once again. Sister Crystal Winfrey has come forward. She's asking for prayer. She'd like to make a public confession. Brothers and sisters, I have sinned and I repent, and I just ask that you continue to keep me and my family in your prayers, um, and especially my son and my daughter, you know, they, my son has strayed away, and I just ask that you pray that he come back. And I also ask prayer for my sister who has strayed away, and that she comes back as well. Amen. We want to keep her in our prayers. Sister Ebony Beckwith is asking for prayer, and she'd like to make a public confession. Please stand. Brothers and sisters, um, I come before you as last week. Um, continue that um, requesting prayer. Um, at this time, I'd like to request prayer for my son. Um, he, he has a really great mind. Uh, he just lacks, um, he lacks uh, continuance. He lacks um, the confidence to apply it. And um, it, get, it gets a little um, discouraging because when you try to lead him on to the right path and help him out and everything, um, if they don't have the confidence themselves, they, it's really hard to continue pushing them and saying, hey, you know, because you seem like you're just doing, you're, you're forcing them. That's the word I would like to use is force. So I just like the church to continue praying for him. Um, and one other thing I'd like to continue praying for my husband. Um, we had a scripture today that we read. We read every single morning. Um, and we had a scripture today in Hebrews 10 that was a, a very similar with the lesson today. And it's 
then um, it was really helpful to see that we were on the same needed for today. So it's been, it's been really hard for him um, because when you're trying to do right, it just seems like you know, just pushes you a little bit harder to pull yeah. you from that spot. And I keep trying to encourage him. So keep him in prayer as well. Thank you. Brother Carlton Pope is asking for prayer. He's asking for prayer on behalf of Lynette Knox, who is suffering from a disease, from, from surgery, constructive pulmonary disease. Sister Sandy Pollard is asking for prayer. I'm going to keep Sandy in our prayer. Sister Ruth Wade is asking for prayer. He's asking for prayer for. Prayer for myself, my brother-in-law, and a husband William, a brother-in-law in Alabama. Husband William, and also pray for her grandson Vincent. <laughs> Sister Latrice Shields is asking for prayer. For traveling grace, she's also going to be traveling. She's asking prayer. Sister Marilyn Stewart is asking prayer for herself, for her cousin. Cousin-in-law who is in Florence. Sister Pamela Ely is asking for prayer. She's asked prayer for this for the saints and for everyone. She's asking prayer specifically for Wayne Brown, uh, her sister, for Sister Brown. Curtis Jones, Regina Williams, Sister Bird, and the Ely, Ely family, the Davis family, and the Draper family. Also for John Jones and for Sandy Pollard. And Sandy is also here to pray with us and pray for herself. So we, we want to bless, ask God to bless Sandy. Sister Ely also asked for, asked for prayers for her neighbors and friends. She's given us a number of neighbors, especially for Aretha Hicks, who is uh, doing better, and for Kathleen Connaboy and Amelia Connolly, also prayers for John Valentine. He has, he's suffering from health issues. We wanna keep those names in our, in, our, in our prayers. Sister Bonita Brown, that's for prayers. Sister Bonita, you Brothers and sisters, I have sinned and I repent and I ask for your continued prayer for me and my grandchildren. Also, I'm gonna be having another surgery and I ask that you pray that God guide the hands who will be working with me. And I, I, I really need prayer to, that I may be a better example as a Christian. Sister Nicolette Pope is responding. She's asking for prayer also. We wanna keep Nicolette in our prayers. Sister Crystal, Crystal Winfrey, we're going to keep her in our prayers and ask her for her forgiveness. Sister Sandy Pollard responds. She's asking for prayer. We already called her name, and then we want to, want to keep Sandy in our prayers. God bless her to be with us this morning. And Sister, what, Sister Ruth Wade asking for prayers for herself and family. Sister Marilyn Stewart is asking prayer for her cousin. Sister Latrice Shields is also asking prayers for traveling grace, and we want to pray for her, and we want to pray for all the members of our family. I've tried to call all the names that, that have, given, have submitted a request for prayer. We want to just keep all our family and all, all our members in our prayers, and especially for those who, um, whose names we can call on, but we want, to, we want to speak to them directly and invite them to come and worship the Lord with them. Especially those members uh, like John Jones and those ones who have not worshipped together with us. We just want to keep them in our prayers. They, they, they haven't disappeared. They haven't gone anywhere. We just want to keep on praying for them. And I pray that I, that I haven't omitted anyone's name. Excuse me. Sister Nicolette is asking for prayers also. The back of the car. I heard you, yes, thank you. Yes. 
Sister Nicolette is asking for prayers for Tristan and for herself. She's asking for prayers for their daily challenges and temptations. And she's asking prayer for the Bush family. Let us go to God in prayer. God, our Father in heaven, we come before your mighty throne of grace. After hearing your words and after your message has been sent out to us from heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the instructions and the, and the message from our minister, Brother McLean. We thank you for his, his health and for Sister McLean and for her health. And then, Lord, we come before you for the number. You, we, we, we know we serve a mighty God. Your shoulders are more broad than we can even, even imagine. And so we lay all of our burdens. We come to you, Lord, and lay all our burdens upon you. But we ask specific prayers for Sister Ebony. Sister Ebony asks prayers for herself, for her family and her husband. Uh, we pray for them, and we pray for him, and we pray for, for her son. And we just thank you, Lord, for blessing Sister Ebony to, to always come together and, and, and offer up prayers and supplications to you. We recognize and always know that you are God, and besides you, there is none other. We just thank you for specific prayers for Sister Ruth Wade, who asked for herself and family, and we want to ask you to bless her, her grandson and her brother-in-law, and, and, and pray, bless Sister Wade uh, in her health struggles and her, her health challenges. So we just thank you, Lord, that she's always able to come out and worship together with us. We keep, she always acknowledges her to keep herself in your service. So we ask you to bless her. Bless all the members of our family. We, we ask you to specifically request those names who, who, that we have called, even those neighbors of some of our, some of our members who, who just pray for them and pray together with them, even those members uh, of our family who are in our hearts and in our spirits, even if they're not in our presence. Please, Lord, bless them to come together with us to worship and study and, and, and serve you. Please bless Sister Crystal Winfrey. Sister Crystal asks for prayers for herself and her family. And we just pray for her children and her, 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 son, her, her daughters. And we just thank you, Lord, for being our God and our blessed Heavenly Father. Uh, we want to keep on asking you, Lord, to bless us through your message and through your word. Bless Nicolette. Bless Tristan. Bless her in a special way, Lord. You have given her... The, the willingness to come together and worship and serve you. And we just thank you, Lord, for allowing her to come and be with us. Brother Carlton asks prayers for, for, for uh, friends and, and, and family, and we just pray for him and we pray for them. And we just thank you for being a mighty God and a blessed Heavenly Father. Please, Lord, thank you for blessing Sister Marilyn Stewart, and she's asking for prayers for her cousin. And we ask you to bless her, and we ask you to bless them. We thank you, Lord, for being our God, our Father, and we just pray that we have not omitted any names, but you heard all of our requests. You know our hearts. Please, God, you know our spirits. You allow us, you enable us to come together and worship you and study and serve you, Lord. And now we just thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your love. Bless us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen. We prepare for our communion, I need the Lord's Supper. If you're in need of your, your communion, just raise your hand. Someone will see to it that you get one. Mom. 
causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble. Tremble, tremble, were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when the sun refused to sound? Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble. Tremble, tremble, were you there when the sun refused to shine? Were you there when they laid him in? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh, sometimes it causes me to trim. Tremble, tremble, were you there when they laid him in the tomb? For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. 
For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Consider these words as we go to God in prayer. Father God, we come to you and we say thank you. We thank you, Father, for your son that you gave, and he, he gave his life, Father, that we may have this life and have it more abundantly. Father, you have blessed us up to this time, and we ask, Father, now that we examine, the, examine ourselves, Father, and look upon the emblems that are, that are in our hands. Our prayer is, Father, that we take these and we remember your son and his, uh, his pain and his suffering and all that he has done for us. Bless our mind, Father, and continue to bless our spirit. This is our prayer through your son. Let us all say, amen. now that we want to turn our hearts and minds to giving. There are a number of scriptures that go all the way back to the Old Testament. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable, according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. For who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. We serve a generous God. Let us be generous in returning to him that with which he has blessed us. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for this opportunity to show you that we care and that we love you. Father, we ask that you will accept these gifts, bless the givers, bless those who had it in their hearts to give, but were unable to. Bless the stewards that watch over these gifts. Put them to use in a manner which is pleasing to you. 
These and all things we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Let the church say, Amen. I don't have any visitors' cards. Uh, do we have any visitors on my right, your left? You please stand so we can know who you are and and bless you for coming to be with us. Any visitors on my left, your right? Anybody that's here that just feels at home, we hope you are. And we're glad that you came to worship with us today. Again, if anyone has power problems or from the storms and need any assistance, please let us know. And uh, we will try and do whatever we possibly can. Also, anyone that hasn't gotten their new uh, Bible study book, let me know. I'll make sure you get one. Any other announcements? I won't. I, I won't be long. I just want to first apologize to brother, brother Donald Nelson. Um, on the response card that I filled out, I didn't, I didn't fill it out completely or something. And uh, sis, not, not only will Sister Latrice be traveling, but Sister Charmaine Barn will be traveling also. So uh, this week, so keep uh, keep them in, uh, in in your prayers. Also, um, we had a, a a ladies' Bible Bible study. Um, it was, if you recall, it was via via Zoom, and um, we we made a commitment to come back into the building. We went away from went away from that to just to, to help bring people back into into the building. We kind of put it off for the first three months of this year, but um, April fifteenth will be the third third Saturday. I'm sorry, third Saturday uh, of the month. Um, we're going to resume that, resume that class, but it will be in person in the building. That will be Saturday, April 15th at the first class, and um, it will be at 10, 10 a.m. It will be at 10, 10 a.m. That will be instructed by, um, by, by, by Sister Smith for, the first, for, this, for this quarter. So, again, 10 a.m. on Saturday, April 15th, the Ladies' Bibles class will, uh, will resume. Uh, April 15th. I have no other comments or statements. If there's no one else, let's be standing and prepare for this message. We'll sing a verse of this song. Pay particular attention to the words. Take this song home with you. It means so much. Mm. Earthly wealth and fame may never come to me, and a palace fair here mine may never be, but let come what I'm 
tossed, I'm tossed about and driven by the foe. I'm sad with him and with I press along, still looking up in prayer for his home, sweet home, if Christ is only there. for waking us up this morning. Thank you for allowing us to have a good, wonderful service. Thank you for allowing us to hear this wonderful message from Brother McLean. Please help us to have a safe trip home. Please help us to have a good week at our jobs, at our schools, at our workplaces, that we can teach people the gospel and that we can get people baptized and saved in Christ. In Jesus' name, as we are, amen. 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 All right.